Ideas surrounding phase and phase difference in waves are notoriously complex. I want to give you a little bit more clarity and understanding so that you won't come unstuck when using them. So let's get on with it. Waves transmit energy, and in order to do this, something must be vibrating. In this transverse wave traveling along a rope, we can imagine one of the particles vibrating at right angles to the direction of the energy. Let's take that point that we marked on the battle rope and have it oscillate up and down between a maximum and a minimum. Adding points to the left at slightly earlier time intervals appears to produce a wave that seems to be moving to the right, though that rightwards movement is probably an optical illusion. Let's pick two points that arrive at the top and the bottom at the same times. You probably know already that these two points are said to be in phase or have a phase difference of zero radians or zero degrees. But how come we've suddenly started talking about angles? In this diagram, we've introduced a circle moving at the same frequency as a point from our wave that can be used to describe the point where the circle is. But we can also take that and apply it to the point from our wave since the two points stay together. So for instance, at this point, we're at 90 degrees, whereas at this point, we're at 180 degrees from our starting point. Originally, we started with the zero point at 12 o'clock, but this is completely up to us, so we could start here at the nine o'clock position, if that was more useful. We'll add a complete wave, highlight two points in red, and pause it. Moving on just a few frames, we can see that the red point on the left is about to move up, whereas the red point on the right is about to move down. By increasing the angle, we can bring the red point on the right to the place where it is in the center and moving up. So it's behaving just like the point on the left was originally. So we've worked out the phase difference, in this case, 180 degrees. To get the green point on the left to be where the green point on the right is, you have to turn the circle through three quarters of a cycle. So 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2 radians. All this talk of points on a wave going up and down and points turning in a circle can seem a little bit over the top when thinking about phase difference. You'll just need to develop a feel for it. Before long, you'll be able to just look at a wave and say, oh yeah, those two points are 180 degrees and those two points are pi by 2 and so on. Now that we've considered the phase difference for points along one wave, we're going to introduce a second wave and consider the phase difference between the two waves. This is a load easier. These two waves show peaks and troughs that are perfectly lined up. The construction lines cut through identical points on each wave. There is no phase difference between these waves. Here we see two waves in which the particles are always vibrating in opposite directions to each other. If you drop a line down from one of the peaks on the top wave and take a line up from one of the peaks on the bottom wave, you can use the distance between them to get the phase difference. You can see that this is half a wave. Half a wave, as you know, corresponds to pi radians or 180 degrees. In this example, things are more complex because at times the two points on the wave are vibrating in the same direction, but not always by any means. Drop a line down from one of the top wave's peaks, then choose the nearest peak on the bottom wave and draw the line up. The distance between these two lines will give you the phase difference. In this case, it's a quarter of a wave, or a quarter of a cycle, or pi by two radians, or 90 degrees. Phase difference plays into a whole bunch of areas of physics, one of which is simple harmonic motion. So this video here might prove useful.